Hey, welcome to the online collaborative groups presentation with Eric Wilson. My name is Donna Eystone and I'm going to be moderating this session and helping out Eric if there's lots of questions. So um, feel free to ask any questions that you have. Eric um, has graciously agreed to present for us today on online collaborative groups. Um, with over 10 years as a trainer and 8 years in online learning, Eric has become a popular resource for collaborative learning online. Eric is well known by his peers and to have wild ideas that make classes more engaging and fun. He earned his Master's of Science in Education in the field of online learning and teaching, is a Blackboard certified trainer, a member of the At One Trainers Bureau, and is a part-time faculty for, the Orange Coast, for Orange Coast College and Kaplan University. He's passionate about education and technology. So Eric, take it away. All righty. Thank you, guys. And uh, I'm glad to have everybody here. Yeah, wow, it went from 14 to 20. That's good. And yeah. That's pretty good. Um, also, if, you can, um, if, you're not, if you are using the phone, uh, mute the phone. Is it a pound six? Is that what it is, Donna? Yes. OK. So feed if you are using the phone, with background noise kind of, can kind of bother some of the people on the line. So. All right, so we're going to have fun. We are going to have fun. Here's the point I'm going to start. What do you think the objective should be? Okay, the web, this is from the At One website that, we, that you guys have all seen already that Marty Atkinson and I kind of wrote this together. And I'm going to ask Donna to switch the tools that are over here uh, to you. And I'm going to ask you to think of maybe like one, or, one word, maybe three words, of what you think would add up to the objectives of what this what this is saying. What would the objective of the class be? So Donna can go ahead or Michelle go ahead and switch the tool. Yeah, they should all have tool access now. And so you should be able you should be seeing uh, tools that appear to just to the left of the slide. And you want them to type, Eric? Yes. And so you can just click on the A tool um, and then you can start adding text here. We have to do this in German or something. Woo! <laughs> well, to learn to offer. Well, I'm just waiting for you guys to. Everybody can jump in. You don't have to wait for one person to talk or type. Just everybody can jump in, put your own ideas on there. Anybody else? Don't be shy. Okay. Excellent. All right. I'm going to try to organize the screen here so we can read some of these. I think I love the sound. Woo! Woo! Gonna run out of room here, Eric. <laughs> okay, we'll stop at this point here. As a W who who we're trying to type, we'll, we'll get you later on. You guys did a good job. Let's see what we got here. And actually, this kind of uh, activity I, I kind of learned from our very own Michael Ola. For the, those of you who have never seen him in his classes, he is awesome. So whenever you get a chance, take Michael Ola's class. Okay, let's see. Donna's helping me straighten this out. Actually, Donna and Michelle. Just so you guys know, Michelle's helping us out as well. She's learning the system and with us, and it's great to have her with us as well. So they're kind of helping me out with this. this I'm learning how to do this part here on this Illuminate system. Okay, let's see here. We've got hope to learn to offer an online group project to engage the students to reduce um, attrition. Good ideas for student collaboration. Hope to make learning fun and engaging. Great to use group assignments and ditch tests. <laughs> ideas to build learning community. Yes. These are wonderful words, you guys, um, for learning. Uh, students to learn in a fun way with their, I think it's supposed to be 
with their imagination or something. Let's see here. Let me see if I can see this one. I can't grab it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, making group work more equal. That's a challenge. That's going to be the challenging part of this whole project. Uh, students who work together both online and in the classroom and on group pro projects. Okay. Congratulations. Guess what, you guys? You just did your first collaborative exercise. Using the poll tools, did you find it easy? Did you find it fun? Use the uh, green check or the X, or if you want to use the happy face. Okay. Did you, did you see how easy it is to start engaging people? Okay. That's how easy it is. That's not the hard part. The hard part is, I don't want to say hard. I want to say challenging. Okay, education is always challenging. We all know that. But it, it, it's keeping things balanced, keeping um, and, and, and balance the, um, the group out. So if someone drops out of class, you've got to fill them in over here, that kind of stuff. We'll talk about that kind of stuff in here. So, and um, CCC Concord, by the way, is a wonderful tool that you can use for your online classes for this very exercise you just did. Okay? And um, we'll talk about CCC conference, and they're my favorite group of people. They're my favorite system. Why collaborative learning? Uh, powerful learning engaging tool. Um, it gets everyone involved, allows learners to learn from each other. Okay, and, and, and they learn from multiple views. And when, the, when you allow that in the classroom, you have already given the class a gift. You have given them a gift to not only steer the class a little bit, but also for them to share their experiences. And especially online, you have diversity. So you get to learn from people from other areas. You know, like, for example, um, uh, let's say opening and closing uh, a McDonald's is in, in Los Angeles is not the same way we do it in New York or in Chicago. So for example, those kind of things that you can share and you get everyone involved. And uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. I think final exams are a waste of time. I told my students that. Of course, they do the yes. They do the rah rah, the cheerleading stuff. Of course, they do. The reason why, well, we'll get into that just a second. But collaborative learning can be measured by use of rubrics, evaluation forms, and essays. It allows them, because when people are taking a test, the test is a waste of time. They get very nervous. And then they're, then they're not themselves. They're not able to be themselves. Yeah, I know we all have these test taking skills, um, techniques, how to lower your stress. Don't drink your coffee in the morning. Don't drink the ginseng stuff in the morning. We know all that kind of stuff, right? Well, that doesn't work. Students still get, and learners, I should say, get very nervous. And it doesn't give them a chance to teach, show us what they do know, what they did learn from the classes. Okay? I, as, as you heard Donna say, I, I teach part-time OCC and I teach part-time at Kaplan University. And Kaplan is a huge college that's worldwide going international. We don't have final exams. We do not believe in them. We have collaborative groups. And it is more rewarding and you get to know what they learn. Okay? Once the test is taken, here's the thing, think about this. If the you have people take final exam. Once the test is taken, how many of those students are going to come back after the final exam and say, "Oh, damn, Mr. Wilson, I got a 62 percent. So where did I screw up?" Okay, like one out of 20. So how does that learning? How does that? Doesn't that contradict what the test is supposed to be for? You know? Yeah, it's a measurement of what they've learned, stuff, but this is. This is what I'm talking about here. Um, and, and actually, Donna's right. If you look at my SAT score, I don't know about her SAT score. I'm not going to say it. I don't want to know. But SAT, actually, a lot of colleges 
are starting to do away from SAT because of this primary reason. Okay. It's also they find SAT is a little biased. So some of the school, I know um, uh, Chaplin out here, Chaplin College out here in Orange County, it's a, it's a beautiful private college. They do not use SAT anymore. They, they do not have that at all. Um, yeah, I, I, I heard about that. Uh, they use it, accepting YouTube videos as part of the application process. I love it. I love it. And that you can use as a um, collaborative project. Ted Hansen of the University of Massachusetts listed about 44 different advantages of collaborative learning. And the most popular ones are, one, develop a higher level of critical of, of thinking, critical thinking skills. There's more retention, more recall. Why? Because there are cues that they've learned in the group work. They've learned something that was funny, or something that was serious, or something that matched with color, or maybe the smell, and the, you know, whatever it might be. They develop team working skills. More and more companies out there are developing teamwork. I know right now, right off the bat, that Apple computers, actually not Apple Inc., um, Yamaha, um, Dell, um, Honda, and several companies are, 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 have already been doing group work because it's uh, effective, it's efficient, and it saves a lot of money. And it makes work fun. It makes it so that you have fun going to work, looking something forward to you, you know? It's about the stronger communication skills. It means you get everybody in the group, learn from each other, they develop a better communication skill. And even those who don't speak English, they kind of learn the English language as they go through the group work. Okay? Especially if it's online. Because they can read, they can learn to read as they're working. And then you develop a community learning environment. All my classes that I've ever taught and I've ever trained, I have taught a class as small as four people to as much as 300. And I have done collaborative learning in all of them. And they love the learning team. And it's just, it's just powerful. It's so powerful. Okay, so now, so is this for on campus only? No. It's not just for campus. Now, I will tell you that designing collaborative learning work and group is a little easier to manage and live on the campus than it is in online. But when you learn some of the tools and stuff I'm going to share with you, you will find out that you can do it online. Um, some people are going to ask me, why am I so big on this? Well, my wonderful mom, who passed away two years ago, um, Barry Wilson, has designed collaborative learning and has taught it at Cal State San Diego and Cal State Los Angeles in the education program. And I went with her in some of the classes, and I learned so much from her. So um, when I got my master's degree, I told her that my mission is going to take it up to the next level, take collaborative learning and move technology and be online. And that's why I'm so big at this. OK, we've got a question already. How do you manage collaborative learning in the large classrooms? So, ha, I'll show you this a little bit. Don't you? Inquiring mind wants to know. OK. Um, it can be used online. There are so many tools you can use. And Blackboard 9 has a wonderful tool. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to access Blackboard 9. I will be using Blackboard 8. But I will tell you where Blackboard 9 has in the tool. I learned some of that from Micah the other day. Um, but there are other tools out there that you can use that are some are free, some are you know. Um, when we use Blackboard, what tools can you use in Blackboard? Well, that's easy. Discussion, chat. You can use a peer assessment system. Okay, and peer system system is Blackboard nine. And there are other tools that you can use. We can use Google Docs. Google Docs is free. Some schools even have Google system in their system, part of their um, learning management system. And there's a lot of, because you see right here, I'm trying to see what my point here. Some 
Somebody's got their, uh, yeah, some. Let me clean the dishes. Okay. There you go. Okay. See, right here, see, this is Google Docs, right there. Okay. Can you guys see my pointer? Uh, no. 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 Use the, um, point, use the, where's your pointer? I don't see your pointer. Use the um, little magic wand, and then you can choose one of the big hands or something at the bottom. Yeah. Huh. Oh, I'm not seeing it. Are you seeing mine? I can see yours. Can, oh, is, is the tool back off and the all, use all that we did earlier? Do you have the tools on? Hmm, I don't know. You can just tell me what to point to, and I'll do it. Okay. So I wanted to show that the uh, voice of the, the arrow is the red box there. The, the, yeah, there you go. See, wait there, there. And I'll, I'll take it to a real one in just a little bit. But you can invite people to see your essay. You can have them evaluate. You can get the link to share. You can see who has access. And you can publish it on a website, and other people can see it. Okay? And you can work together as a group, and it, it, it's free. Um, what, if some, what if some students don't like group projects? Is that one student called me a communist? <laughs> and it's just a on a group project. <laughs> well, you take a bottle of water and you hit the student on the head. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's a great question. Um, some students, are, those students that are like that are usually insecure. And we have to teach them to, to open up. We have to teach them. So what you kind of do, the way I used to do it, is I say, you know what, I can, I can use your help to co-facilitate this group. What if you worked with me and kind of work with the people and see if we can get them to come together? Can you help me my communicator? If you get them a little bit, and you involve them a little more, just go a little extra mile for them, they'll open up and they won't call you a communist. Okay? Um, that's, that's, that's a harsh main thing. So I hope that didn't really happen. Um, Google Spreadsheets has a form tool that can use to create surveys. Yep. Just, yeah, they're really good and you can use it for surveys. It is limited to 50, 50 people and that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's really good. So, Donna is saying we had at once uh, managed a spreadsheet of all our courses in the desktop seminar share among all our most facilitators. Yep, they do. They do. So, okay, let's go to the next slide here. I don't know how many of you have, how many, using the um, green and the white, the green check and X, how many of you have ever heard of Wikio? Wikio, Wikio. How many of you are sleeping? That's cute. Okay. Wikio is a free tool, a collaborative tool. And I was taking to mind, I used um, a Kaplan. And um, it's, it's really cool. You have a home page, you have a calendar page that one of the teams can see. You have folders where people can upload stuff, including files, work documents. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, they have an online meeting tool, like this one, much like what you see right here. They have polls. They have messages. You can leave messages between the members. And they have a to-do list. This is kind of cool for like projects, group projects. Really cool. And it's free. It's free. It does not release your names. You can have it locked down so only people can be invited can come to it. The problem we find with this is sometimes the email filters may block so you may have to send an invitation using your own email, not from uh, Wikio. How many of you ever heard of Dim Dim? That's me, by the way, right there. I look like Darth Vader. <laughs> How many of you see, have used Dim Dim? Well, if you use Google, you better know this name because Google is going to be using Dim Dim as part of their tools now. Um, Dim Dim is a great free online meeting and screen and document sharing for group work. Um, I was trying to use it yesterday and to work with somebody on a computer problem. We had a little issue, but that's 
Jim can follow. Um, they do have costs uh, for if you want to go up to the next level and other kind of stuff. Again, I will show that to you. Um, that's not uh, yes. Have you seen team? But it's not. But is is it not limited to a certain number of users on the free account? Yes, to 20 people. So yeah, it is. There are, um, there are some cost one that can go up to. I'm not saying spend the money. Okay, I'm not saying that. But I'm just saying it's a possibility. You may want to sign MDM groups. You can design the groups for the MDMs and then give the group. Uh, yeah, I, don't we all want to have a small class? And everybody should know name. Everybody knows name. I mean, I that's one of Marty's favorite tools. Marty Axon is one part of one of our one administrators. Okay, so some of you have, some of you don't, and some of you are saying boo. <laughs> Ming is a fun, free social group. It can be locked down to invites as well. Um, and they, they just changed the logos and stuff. And some people have even made it into a website. And um, it's fun. And you can use it for group work as well. So Ming is another good tool. And uh, I I think that's me. <laughs> it had to be during the finals because when I'm when I'm grading finals, I get really goofy like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch to um, share screen. So if you just bear with me for just a minute, and uh, we'll go from there. Hang on, folks. Okay. Okay. Can you guys see my OCC screen? Yep. All right. Okay. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and log on to uh, OCC's Blackboard and show you some of the stuff that I've done in my class. Long password. That's too many passwords in my job. <laughs> okay. And again, this is Blackboard 8. I don't have, we don't have Blackboard 9. We're going to be migrating over that uh, starting this summer. This is Blackboard 6 to 8, by the way. Okay. okay we should have Jeopardy music, um, Donna. <laughs> That's a copyright infringement. Sorry. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Okay. Let's see. Uh, here's my word class here, and I'm going to go in here, and um, some of the stuff. I, I'm. You know what? I got to be careful with Purpa. Hold on. I can't use this because it's got students' names in there. Let me go to. This is a uh, class that I developed with, I don't know if you guys know Ms. Jill Golden, Professor Jill Golden, I should say, and our course designer, and Joyce Bishop from Glen West College, and C.C. Hunt from Glen West. But anyway, this is a class we teach our students, or, I'm sorry, our faculty how to develop online classes. And some of the online the collaborative tools that we use is this discussion. Discussion is a powerful, powerful uh, tool. You can see right here. We have faculty share like their aha moments after they've learned like teaching styles from the various teaching styles we teach them, uh, online teaching styles. And um, and when you click on it, you can you can create your own direction. The ten points. Now, what I usually do in my class is they get um, that, well, here's the requirement in my word class and the online classes I teach. They get a certain amount of points for their initial post. Then they get a certain amount of points for uh, responding to two or more people. Okay, they have to do it over a period of four to five days. It cannot be on one day. The reason I do that is so to make sure that they log on on different days to catch up on materials 
or to see what's going on in the classroom and stuff. Because some people, as we all know, have a really bad habit of doing everything in one day. How do you manage the creating of that? Oh, well, I'm, I'm so glad you asked that question. If you go into here, the Blackboard has, oops, this is a teach. Uh, I have to go, oh, this is, this is class of stage, that's why. Oh, I went too far. Duh. Okay. In Blackboard, uh, this the end of Blackboard Nine. After you make a discussion as we're going through, you go into the, the action tool and you go into create topic. And you can do this in one of several ways. You can see the statistics here if you want to be a, um, a if you're on the run. You can see how many they've read, how many they've posted, and how many replies they've done. Okay. The other way, the way I do it is yes, I read over 1,500 posts a semester. I go into here, this action tool here, and I go use to the post. See, this person would have gotten nothing. So why do we care for 10? I don't know. I didn't grade this, so this is somebody else. Let me see if I can find another one. Here we go. See, this here is an original post. So the other one would say RE for reply. Okay, so she didn't reply. So in this case, I would have given the person 15, I'm sorry, 10 points instead of uh, 25. Carol is asking, what tab are you in? You have to be in the teach tab. Okay, have to be in the teach tab, in the discussion, and you go into the action tool. And you grade topic, okay. And I usually do it a few days after everything's been done, supposed to be done, because you know, you get some students not good time managers. And um, then I do the grades. Now, once the grades are done, what I usually do is I'm gonna go back to my word class, and you won't be seeing the students' names after. She's asking me about it. Okay. Carol, you go to discussion, the teach tab, and then you see this action tool right here. Looks like a drop down. And then you go to grade topic. If you don't have it, that means you didn't turn the grading on in the setup. Okay. You have to set the grades up for the discussion before any one person posts anything. Otherwise Blackboard would not let you change it. Okay. These are great, exactly Donna. These are graded discussion posting. And that's the, you set that up under the build tab. Okay. Now, once I have done the grades, uh, by the way, I in, in this class I've used rubric. Okay. I'm gonna quickly go in here. Let's show you what the rubric looks like. That's using from the grading forms right here. And and here's what it looks like. You, you, there's a rubric. You click, click, click. Okay. And it says automatically calculates the point and you just put a comment in here. Okay. So that's set in. That goes straight to the grade book. Right? Now, there's also a question about, about designing those rubrics. Do you have any tools that you use besides the Blackboard tool to, to no. create the rubric? So you use this grading form to create that. You create. You go to grade under the teach tab. You go to grading form. It's really easy, actually. Um, I was surprised how easy it was. And then you go to create grading form. You get your title, and then you put your description. And then and you can do the same form for many quizzes or I'm sorry, um, discussions or assignments. And this is the basic here. You can go in and change these. You can a pencil tool. You give it another name. And here are in performance indicators. You can um, add more indicators or a criterion this way. It's really easy and it's really cool. It's really cool. And the students can see what it looks like. Let me show you how that works. In the directions, when the students go in here, they can see graded, yes. Oh, oh, there's a rubric. They can click on this and they can see what I'm looking for. 
they can see that there's no excuse. And I, I've never gotten an excuse from the students why I gave a low score because this was there all the time. They should have read, read that. And I, and I scanned my orientation video and the syllabus. Okay. Now, once I have graded the discussion, I lock them. See this? It's a lock on, you go down to uh, property and down to behavior options and turn on the lock. Students can go back in and read it but they can't add more or respond to more. Okay? Rubrics help students plan better contribution to the discussion forum. A great deal of work up front for the instructor, but it works like a dream. Exactly, Elaine, it does. Locking the session is a great training tool to get students to post in a timely manner. Yep. Yeah, exactly. It's a tough love an approach. And exactly, exactly. And my, I knock on any complaints by students. They know where I'm coming from. But so they love this because they can respond to each other. And I also tell them if they're stuck on something, post a question there. I guarantee you, you'll get an answer from someone within 24 hours. Because I want them to help each other. I want them to help each other. And this is in all the surveys I have done. The students love this part of their homework more than their written homework. They love this part. Okay. Look at the look at the message. 189, 130, 119, and all that kind of stuff. I will get to that just a second. Because that thing is what you know, can't use Blackboard. Okay. So we have that. You have the chat. You already know about the chat room, that kind of stuff. The other thing I want to show you is the group manager. In Blackboard, you have a group manager, and this allows you to create um, different groups. And Blackboard can do it in a number of ways. You can have a create custom group where you can add the people based on the people in, in the grade book. Okay. At my school, we have a system called Banner, and it automatically populates into the Blackboard and it goes it does its work. Okay. Um, so you have to build in those uh, points to motivate, or they won't be able to. Work. Yes, yes. Then that's that's a, a golden rule right there. You have to say it's worth so many points or they are not going to do it. That's right, Carol. Exactly. Carol, is that, are you my, is that Carol, my buddy? Carol at OCC? <laughs> a plant. <laughs> yeah, she's, she, she, we, we were in the same department of the stuff. I'm glad she's joined us. She's fun. She's great. Um, create multiple groups. That's a Blackboard can assign Groups, you just tell it how many groups you want. So, if you want, uh, <laughs> uh, you want five groups, or if you want six groups, and Blackboard, uh, I'm going to assign the people to that instantly in a snap. Okay? And if anything is left, if there's any students left over, it will automatically distribute them to the most group needed. Okay? You can move them. You can move the groups. It can be very end people. And then there's also the old-fashioned sign-up sheet. Okay, people can sign up if they want to be in this group or they want to be in that group. So you've got lots of ways. The nice thing about this is once you create these groups, you can sign a specific discussion to a specific group. You can sign specific assignments to specific groups. You can assign certain things so they can't see each other's group work. Okay? It's a fabulous tool. I can't show you all of this in one hour. I want to show you the other free tools that are out there as well. But I'm just showing that there are ways and tools in Blackboard. So if you have Blackboard on your campus, I encourage you to talk to your trainer. You should have a trainer on your campus, not at least your Blackboard administrator. See if they can show you what that is. We also have some wonderful classes at At One. Micah is going to teach Blackboard 9 starting on April 12th. And I don't know who is teaching um, the Moodle one. Moodle has fantastic tools as well. Moodle is a competitor to Blackboard, but it's a free open source, and it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. I have not had great luck with signing up some stuff. Yeah, no, it's true. Elaine, you're absolutely right. Sometimes I end up changing the groups. They protest, but they but my goal. And actually, Elaine, um, the, the thing is, Use the multiple groups. 
just tell them, I'm going to sign you in a group. This is the way it's going to be. Okay? Um, I have found out to be effective. Nobody argues with me. And they are, they're, they're fine with that. And I recommend you keep your groups to four people, maybe five maximum, but no more than that per group. Okay? Um, because the, the bigger they are, the more problems you're going to have. Now, if you're in a large lecture hall, that's a different story. And hopefully you have a course assistant that will help you with that. And Moodle 4 is a four-week class. Um, Donna, who teaches the Moodle class? Do you know? At the time, be the caller in the conference. To mute or unmute your line during the call, please press star six at any time. Broadcast system, okay? <laughs> if that ever actually fails, we might be having something going on. I'm just kidding. Okay. Okay, so let me, um, let me move on to um, some other stuff. Uh, Carol, I have a situation that when in the middle of group project, two or so don't participate, even for points. So I try to combine groups. Yeah, and yeah, that's what you have to do. You're always going to run to the situation, but you run to the situation in the classroom too. So it's not that much different than online versus the classroom. I mean, yeah, in classroom you can grab someone's arm and say, "Yeah, here, put you in here. You get out of here." No, no I'm just kidding. But it, it, it's the same type of thing. It's, and actually, moving people around in Blackboard is very easy. If this is like adding members and removing members, no big deal. The downside to Blackboard 8 for that is if a student drops, it doesn't remove them from the group. So you're kind of fooled. You have to kind of monitor and make sure the student is actually in the class. If they're not, you have to take them out of the group. Blackboard 9, uh, according to Micah when we were at the lunch workshop last week, is supposed to do that, but he wasn't sure. He's looking into that for me. So. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move on to Blackboard. Let me show you. Video! Video! I know, I know, I'm crazy. Carol knows I'm crazy. <laughs> she, she knows that. That's why she avoids me. So I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah, that's right. Thanks for reminding me, Donna. Um, Micah is doing a, a lunch one tomorrow. Increased student success with Blackboard performing monitoring tools with Blackboard 9. That's been a great series so far, everybody. Really good. Okay. Here is video. And I'm going to see. Oh, this is correct. I've got so many passwords, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'll just say that. I didn't do a good job on that one. There we go. Um, one of the things that I was um, trying to do here is I have a, uh, we're trying to work on some projects here at Orange Coast about the learning management system. And so I had I once I made it, I invited people. It was it's not open to the public. And here they can have the comments. You can have a calendar in here that you can put your activities, things to do, that kind of stuff. You have a folder where you can upload documents, including Word, Excel, Access, PowerPoint, um, and guess what? There's no limitation. I couldn't believe it. I, I went, what? 
So if someone put it at one gig file, it's going to go, and they said, yeah, it'll take a while, but um, it does upload. Here they have their own online, manage, uh, online meeting system, um, much like what you're seeing here at CCP Conference. And, uh, and uh, it's got a virtual meeting. You can do one webcam, you can have a conference call, you can have a chat room. How many people can be on this meeting? It, it, it depends on your roster. Everything is based on the roster, which is nice. That means you're in control. So if you have 15 people on the roster, you're going to have 15 people. If you have 80 people on the roster, you're going to have 80 people on here. There's no limitation as long as they're in this roster. You're in good shape. Pretty cool. Uh, the poll tool um, is very cool. It's very easy to use. Um, it's creating it is it's very simple, straightforward. And it goes in here. Oh, that's a question. Can you record your meetings on here? I'm, I'm not sure. I have not had, uh, looked into that. Um, I can look into that for you. That's a good question. Message. You can do a text message to someone within the system. You can email. Everybody's on your roster. You can do a sticky note. You can do a voice note if you want to. Again, to everyone in the roster. And here's the two to you. Google. Finish your work. Do the vocabulary. Whatever you want to do here. What's nice about this, as a faculty, you can easily make different video groups for different group projects. Now, for example, Carol, um, she, she teaches um, accounting and other business classes. She can have, let's say she's teaching accounting, she can have one group be um, a Starbucks group. Another company, the another Wikio group would be the uh, the Slam Bam Burger King. The another one would be the Disney Company, whatever. And then you can throw your students in there, okay? And then they will send an invite out to their 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 account email. And stuff. So um, no, the people have in the roster have to have a Wikio account. No, no, they don't. These people here. Jill and Joe, they don't have a legal account. I just use their email and they get in. Okay? You can use a school email, you can use personal email, you can use anything you want. It's just it's really cool. You add new members and you put their names in here and you put a customized text and you can go. I still recommend using your regular email because again, this can get blocked by the filtering system. Um, when I did this, uh, it was blocked on Jill's, but wasn't blocked on Joe's. And we're using the same Outlook system. <coughs> Don't ask me why. So, so you can create your groups. You can have multiple groups and that kind of stuff. And uh, if you are a Facebook user, you can use Facebook here as well. That's been added uh, last month. So, doesn't cost anything. It's absolutely free. It's wonderful. It's a really good tool. <coughs> Moving that along, share my cost very close. And I've got. A Find the section. Let's see here. We had what was the other thing I had to cover? Jim Jim. Jim, thank you. Ah. Jim Jim. Yay. Moving right along. Okay. Jim Jim. Um at first it starts out a little slow, but you're very pretty to see after that. Um, it's going to be uh, a part of the Google family. Say Google meets Jim Jim. Okay? So it's going to be a part of the Google family. So, and they have their own training, by the way. So you want to be trained by Jim Jim, you can. It's kind of like the same kind of training that if you were to go to CCC Conference, you would get the training from Donna and or um, Elaine, and probably not now Michelle, I guess, a new comer here. Um, the uh, you can try now, and you can get your own account here. I'm going to log on in just a second. So you sign on, here's your information, and that's all you have to do uh, for trying on. I'm going to go ahead and sign in, and then I have a price list in there. Do you know how they're going to change when they once Google is taking them over? I say what? Do you know if they're going to change at all when Google takes them over? Or? No. 
No, they're, they're going to keep it at the MDM. Okay. I think they're just going to merge with them. I think that's what they're going to do. Okay. So now, let me show you. So here, you're free in town. You got, well, you know what? There we go. Your free account, you get uh, group demos, collaboration, and up to 20 people. Uh, if you want to pay $25 a month, it's not a contract. So you can pay $25 for this month, you're going to have a bunch of meetings, and then go back down to free, and then go back on later on. You can switch. Okay. Or if you're going to do a webinar, you can use this too. And then here are the different stuff that you could do with the collaboration and all this kind of stuff. So what you can do is, if you're going to have small groups, you can have CMDM for small individual groups. You can set them up for groups if you want to, or if you want to set them up for um, just your office, even your office hours, you can do that. You can schedule meetings with them. So if you are going to, if you have five groups in your class, for example, and you want to have an online meeting with the groups, you can do that through scheduling or you can just start it. Um, the nice thing about this, I'm not going to click it because it's going to activate another job, but I don't want to do that on top of uh, uh, CCC conference Java. Um, you can communicate through this now two different ways, which is you have a phone bridge. The phone bridge is not free. The phone bridge is a um, largest number, 720 number. And I think that's in Vegas. Um, and then they now have what's called VOIP, Voice Over IP, which is what like CCC Confer has those choices as well. Um, if you're going to use the Voice, I mean, uh, voice Over Internet, the, it, can, the, it can be a slight delay when voice is transmitted. Okay, so it's nice to use those problems. With, you know, if you want to use the phone bridge, then what happens is you can tell people to use Skype, and it won't cost them almost nothing. If you were to get a Skype account and just use that number, it doesn't cost anything to use it. Okay. And by the way, once you sign up, I have my own room. This is what I use, and I use this as my meeting room for my students. Um, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, why don't I use the CCC Comfort? Because I can't use that with Kaplan. And Kaplan is international. CCC Comfort is only for California. So I use this for my Kaplan students, and they love it. They love it to see them um, using this as well. Um, there is another tool that I forgot to mention, and that's Illuminate um, Learning Center. Um, that's part of Illuminate Live. And if you go to, I'm trying to find, I know we're almost running out of time here. The CCP Confer is using Illuminate's full tool, okay, and it is absolutely wonderful. By the way, just so you know, um, here, let's so you can have a C space. Now, you can meet with, I'm sorry, no, here, it is, Learning Central. Meet three people, so you only have three people in your meeting, you know, like a kind of an office. That's what you can use this. It's the same environment, but you're seeing here the CCP Confer. But you only can have three people, and that counts you as well. Okay. So I just wanted to show that with you as well. Um, let's see. The California Community College Chancellor's Office has paid for Illuminate so that you can use in, with inside your Blackboard system. But I'm telling you right now, it's not that easy to set up. Um, I really recommend using. CCC Confer. Um, if you've never, you, you're already using it with me on here. You already know how wonderful it is. And the best part about CCC Confer are the people that work behind the scenes: um, Donna, Elaine, Michelle, um, Blaine. Um, some of the people that work behind the scenes are absolutely wonderful people to work with. And you can set up your own office hours. You can have your own meeting. You can do collaborative work in here as well. Not that hard. It's, it's, it's very easy to set up and it's free. It doesn't cost you a penny. And I love CCP concert. 
Let's go to Google, uh, the very last one, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, in order to have the Google Docs, you've got to have a Gmail account. Okay, so if you don't have one, go to Google, click on Account, and then create your account here. And um, I love Gmail. I don't know about the rest of you, but I love Gmail. Steps. And see, even remind me I have a meeting today. That's because we're getting old. I can't forget things right there. Okay. Documents. This is really cool. One of the things that's nice is about this, you can create documents. You can have a presentation, a spreadsheet, it's like having Microsoft Office, but online, and it's free. Not a penny to the students. Okay? So you create a new document. <coughs> And you can, you know, uh, oops. Uh -huh. Okay. You have, you have all your editing tools stuff and all these things. Almost like Microsoft Word. It's just identical. And um, if you guys want me to do a whole series of Google training workshops, let me know, and I will talk to Marty and see if we can set up a Google series this summer or something. Um, I'm doing it for Kaplan Special Development, and they're loving it. Um, here's where the best part of collaborative learning with this. You can do this with the docs. You can do a spreadsheet. You can do presentations. Um, you you invite people to work on it. You can link it to share, have access. You can even email it. Okay. Let me give you an example. Um, Where I always open a new document. Okay, let me see if I can find. See, here's one. This is a, a one collaborative. Okay, so if I go here, I've got. I'm working on something for Catherine, and I can see who has access. And I've got my boss. She can edit. I give her edit rights. Okay, so she can edit at any time. What's really cool is doing this at the same time. So I could be on here and Michelle can be you know, who's in Colorado. This uh, we could be online. She could go ahead and changing and stuff and you'll see the effect when when it saves it instantly. I mean, it's just absolutely wonderful. Um, so Google is wonderful. And they, most they ha they even have Google for education. I think it's like hundred and fifty dollars a year. Everyone gets email with the fifty um, 50 gig space, um, all the documents, bigger spaces of sites. It's absolutely wonderful. It's a great collaboration tool. Okay, I'm going to close this out. Close this out, and then I'm going to where's return the screen. And that's our gospel, guys. Anybody have any questions? See, Steven said a Google seminar like for Eric's mentioned. Sounds great. Okay, let me let me talk to Michelle about. I'm sorry, um, Marty, and see if I can put something together for at one. I would love to do that. Google is fun. I love Google. Love this app. Um, you can use it with the iPad too. Uh, I'd like to know of the different tools available in Google. Oh, I I can't do that in one day. We'll have to do a whole series. There's just a bunch of stuff. It's just great. Um, anybody have any questions? Did you all have a good time? Did you did this kind of help you guys? Give you some ideas to think about, to brainstorm for Google? Okay, good. I hope I did. I hope I didn't bore anybody. Elaine said, "I love Google, but for shorter and smaller assignments in my face-to-face -face class." Great. Use the Web Paint Wiki. Oh, okay. I should look into that. Let me write it down. Web Paint Wiki. I love learning new stuff, I tell you. And okay, I'll look into that. Okay. All right. Uh, I I don't have any further than this uh the the, the survey. Actually Donna, I'll let you do this part. This is your shop, honey. I won't take your job away from you. <laughs> okay. Well there is a survey link and I'll actually um just
push it out to you. Also, um, if you wouldn't mind taking a few minutes to um, fill out fill out the online survey, and it can um, be a place for you to tell us what you would like to see us offer in the future. And so um, that should open on a, a web browser on your window. And we thank you for being here today. Um, it was a really great session, Eric, and we had lots of nice participation. Um, this seminar has been recorded, and the archive will be available on the At One website. Um, which you can um, you'll be able to get in probably 24, 36 hours. It will be up there. Um, and so um, you lost the survey link. Um, you, there's a link for it right in the chat room. I can also paste it in there again. Um, so thank you, Eric, for um, for being with us. And um, I hope that everybody has. Everybody that wasn't talking had some lunch while they were here. And for those of us that were talking, we'll go and have some lunch now. We're not trying to put you on the at one starvation diet. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. It was great. I had a lot of fun with you guys. Great. It was a great session. It was good participation. We had lots of people here. So thank you 